The Gap by Ian Ross, Act One. Lights up on an odd landscape. It very much resembles a dry riverbed, only magnified. Cracks and gaps create a disjointed mosaic of earth. Several sandbags are present. They form a small wall that cuts across the middle of the stage. A well-dressed woman walks on by Chamberlain. In her hand is a leash attached to a small dog, Mr. Connolly. Oh, what's the matter with you? Vi seems distracted for a moment. She begins to chew on one of her nails. She remembers her dog, bends down and picks him up. Oh, don't you be frightened. The flood won't touch us. It won't. She looks at Mr. Connolly's paws, inspects them, and walks off. A middle-aged Métis man, Saul McKay, and his youngest son, Chester McKay, enter. Saul shakes his head and clucks his teeth. Look at all that water. I ain't seen that much since 1950. Let's go, Dad. What the heck for? Well, I fear, feel weird. What do you mean you feel weird? I feel weird walking around white people's houses and yards. What if they think I'm trying to break in? Chester, what? There's some of their blood in you too, you know. I know, but I don't care about that. I know if I saw some white guys wandering around our house, I think they were trying to break in. What are you getting all paranoid about? If white guys were trying to break into our house, I'd call the cops. Well, if white guys were trying to break into our house, they would be cops coming to arrest us. Oh, quit talking so stupid. Just make yourself useful. Where's Evan? Never mind Evan. Just start sandbagging. Whew. Would you look at all that water? Not since... Not since 1950. But you know what, Chester? Chester. Chester, you know what? What? Some good's going to come out of this. Dawn Chamberlain enters. She is dressed in stylish casual clothes and resembles her mother, Vi. She picks up a piece of something off of her shirt. She is somewhat startled by Saul and Chester. Hello? Chester stops placing sandbags. Hello? Are you volunteers? Oh no, I'm forced to do this. Chester? Uh, yes, yes we are. We've come to help. Oh, um, well, thanks. But I think we're supposed to wait for an engineer or something? Don't worry, I can help. Oh, maybe we should wait. Don't worry, I know what I'm doing. Okay. I've been through this kind of disaster before. Disaster? You think this flood will be a disaster? It already is. But don't worry, though. Good will come out of this. You'll see. Okay, then. Chester, get to work. I am working. We'll work harder. I'm going to get donuts. Saul leaves. Chester slows down in his work. He is very uncomfortable around dawn. So, what should I do? I don't know. Chester shrugs his shoulders and keeps working. Um, well, thank you. Do you know, do you have a bathroom I could use? Oh, um, well, look, that's okay. Just forget it. I understand. Well, they're going to set up some porty potties down the street, though. Dawn? Dawn? Right here, Mom. Where have you been? 
Well, we had to go for a long walk. The dog is still a regular. And God, is this city nuts. People are ripping other people off. Well, there's some people helping people. Huh, charging ridiculous prices for those sumpy, pumpy things, whatever they are. So has anybody shown up yet? A couple of guys. But where are they? One's getting donuts, the other's using the washroom. Not ours, are they? No. Oh, thank God. That would have been terrible. Vi leaves. Don begins to toss sandbags. Evan McKay enters. A smallish, muscular young man dressed in a, in a t-shirt, jeans, wearing well-used work gloves. He seems hesitant, but walks up to Don. He has a slight limp. Don does not notice him at first. Can I help? I'm sorry? Hi. Oh, hi. Um, here to help? Yeah, I ain't never done this before. What can I do? Not sure. Heave ho, I guess. Heave ho the dario. Hi ho. Hi who? It's hi ho the dario. Oh, I always thought it would be heave ho. I guess I'm not very good with poetry. <laughs> I'm Don. Evan. Well, I guess we should get back to work. It doesn't look like you stopped. Not really. Hmm. This is pretty wicked stuff going on, eh? I know. I ain't never been in a flood before. Me either. Vi appears with refreshments. She approaches Evan. For you, sir? Oh, no, thank you. You sure? Well, Don? Mm, no. My name's Vi. Evan. Well, it's nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. My, you are hard working. Yes, very hard working. What's with the attitude, Don? My attitude? What about your attitude? Relaxing while we're trying to save our house? I'm under a lot of strain too, you know. Well, why don't you do something about it? <gasps> Not in front of strangers, dear. I'll be in the house. Bye, exits. God damn it. Um, Evan? Yeah? Could you... Stop for a sec? Sure. Um, I think those go over here. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know which place they were supposed to go. Oh, I'll help. That's okay, I'll help you. Don notices Evan's limp and is about to say something, but stops. They form a two-person line and begin to toss the sandbags to one another. I hope everything's okay for you and your mom. Thanks. They toss more sandbags. Evan tosses one accidentally towards the river. Oops. Oh, I'll get it. No, that's okay. I can get it. No, no, no. It's all right. It's no problem. Don goes to retrieve the bag and slips. Evan helps her up. You know I could have got that. It's all right. I fall, fall all the time. Not me. You learn to balance fast with a crummy leg. <laughs> you, okay, right. Uh, well, I guess so. You just got to watch where you're stepping, eh? Hey, you weren't trying to, like, do me a favor just now, were you? No. Well, kind of, I guess I was, but not for the reason that you're thinking. And what reason's that? 
Um, uh, well, nothing. Thanks. It's okay. It's always been like this. What has? My leg. Oh. Yes. Uh, well, it's okay. Honestly, it's okay. It's just an old war wound. uh, Which war? My last relationship? (laughs) Don't worry, I'm just joking. I've never really been in a relationship. Oh, well, I think I'll shut up now, Evan. Um, That's too much information. Or maybe not enough. What? Never mind. Don tosses him the sandbag. They work some more and finish for the day. Don notices a tattoo on Evan's arm in blue ink. It says W-Y-S-I-W-Y-G. Don begins to chuckle. And why do you have that on your arm, Evan? Oh, I don't know. My cousin did that to me when I was passed out. He gave you a tattoo? Oh, sure. We do all that stuff all the time. I gave him a makeover once and put a dress on him. Remind me not to get drunk around you. Okay. But stupid thing, though. W-I-S-I-W. I mean, I never know what I'm, how I'm supposed to pronounce it. There's no consonants or in this word. Uh, vowels, and it's not a word, actually. It's an acronym. An acronym? Like the opposite of something? No, no, that's an antonym. A what a Oh, never mind. But do you know what it means? Yeah. Well, holy crap, what does it mean? What you see is what you get. Huh. Well, that's me. Excuse me? What you see is what you get. Oh, do I? Oh, um, okay. How about a coffee? No, two boy. Give me a call. Okay. Know what that stands for? Yes, I even know where it comes from. Really? Really? But I bet you don't know where I come from. Is it exotic? Sure. I come from, well, I come from Winnipeg, I guess. (laughs) What a day. What a day. It was very nice to meet you, Don. Don Chamberlain. McKay. Nice meeting you, Evan McKay. Yeah, it is nice meeting me. So how's Thursday for you? Right. Uh, good. All right. Thursday. Is that legal? What? You know, asking people out on dates while you sandbag? I think it is. Here, I'll give you my number. I don't want to embarrass you or anything. Evan removes a pen from his shirt pocket. Embarrass me? Well, I'm... um, Well, we could be wherever, you know. No. Well, I'm... What? Never mind. So... Well, cool. Okay. Okay. Better yet, give me your number. Okay. Evan offers his arm. Dawn smiles and writes her number on his forearm. Evan crosses upstage. 
lights up on two areas of the stage, separated by the small wall of sandbags created in the previous scene. One area is the middle-class home of Dawn and her mother Vi. It, like its occupants, is stylish. The other area reveals the home of Evan, his father, Saul and his younger brother Chester. It is not stylish and needs new everything and a good cleaning. Action occurs in both areas simultaneously. Saul, Chester, and Evan are eating dinner and watching TV. Chester lifts his bum half off the couch and farts. Where, what are you doing? (laughs) What? Why don't you go outside to do that? I'm not going to get up to go fart. Well, don't lift your ass so the rest of us can smell it. That helps to relieve the pressure. Pressure? Are are you going to hit the ceiling if you don't lift your leg? Hey, boys, be quiet. I can't hear the TV. Chester, next time warn us if you're going to do that. Chester burps. Ha, nice. If it's not one end, it's out the other. Relax. Why don't you change the channel? I leave it here. Yeah, Dad, we won't be able to get the picture back. I'm going to get us cable. Oh, and how are you going to do that? We'll just hook it up. Hey, turn up the news there. Oh, Dad, it's just flood stuff. I'm sick of flood stuff. You'll watch that flood stuff and like it. Tomorrow we're going out again. All of us. To get out. that We got to get out there and help these people sandbag. I got to go to work. Work your arse. You don't have to go. You don't have. You won't have no work to go to if the city floods. You boys got no idea. You know in 1950 we had furniture floating in the living room. Here we go. And why did you say I have to say anything? I didn't. Furniture in the living room. My mom's dining room table bobbing up and around like... Well, like a bob. Why do we have... Why do we got to help? We don't live by the river. It's just rich white people who live there. What a st- Stupid place to build a city anyhow. Us Indians never used to live here. We'd just summer here and then head up to Stonewall, right? You can't summer in Stonewall. Now, Chester, I told you before, we can't blame them for not having any good sense, even if they're white. Well, we're part white. Yeah, but not all white. Lights up on the other side of the stage. Bye, has broken her silence with Dawn. All right, I'm sorry. Well, don't apologize to me. Apologize to our volunteers. I didn't hear them complaining. Well, that's because they're considerate. Dawn! Vi! Don't you address me by my name. Where were you? I told you. Don't you care about that we may lose our home? Of course I do. Well, I can't do it all this myself. Or should I ask Mr. Connolly? Don't be ridiculous. Where is he? And how am I supposed to know? Did you give him his medication? No, he refuses to take it. For heaven's sakes, Dawn... If it's so easy, you do it. Let's not fight. So, did anything exciting happen today? You mean besides a flood? Yes, besides the flood, which I just think is a lot of hype. Hype? Ha, I swear you're insane. So, what was the exciting news? Well, I uh, got a date. 
on the other side of the stage lights up. Um, I got a date. <laughs> you? Yeah. Lights up on the on Dawn's side of the stage. You what? Lights up on Evan's side of the stage. That's my boy. Man, I knew I should have stayed. Lights up on Dawn's side of the stage. While you were sandbagging? Lights down, lights up on Evan's side of the stage. No, during a break. Lights down, lights up on, on Dawn's side of the stage. I can't believe you. Lights down, lights up on Evan's side. I don't believe it. That's my son finally getting a woman. What do you mean finally? Lights down, lights up on Dawn's side of the stage. Do you know this person? Yeah, I do now. Well, who is he? Lights down, lights up on Evan's side of the stage. Well, she's real nice. Is she white? And what difference does that make? Now, Chester, you behave yourself. Lights down, lights up on Dawn's side of the stage. Well, now that's very surprising. I hope this man is decent. Of course he's decent. Aren't all volunteers decent? Well, I just hope he has a good family. Lights down on Dawn's side of the stage. Lights up on Evans. And Chester burps. Well, bro, I hope you know what you're doing. Oh, wait. Of course you don't. Because this is your first girlfriend. So when do we get to meet her? The light from the television fills a darkening room, occupied by two people. Dawn and Saul McKay. Dawn dressed to go out. She sits on the edge of a large red armchair, balancing carefully so that she does not pierce her bum on one of the springs sticking out up through the chair, the chair seat. Saul, wearing work pants and a shirt that needs changing, rocks back on his chair. Neither speak. The only sound is coming from the TV, which is playing a rerun of Lassie. Dawn loses her balance and almost falls onto the floor. Dawn does her best to recover. Saul notices and is amused. Dad? Hey, Dad, where's all the ass wipe? I don't know. So, some flood, eh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. And thank you for helping. No problem. I, I appreciate it. You know, this is my third flood in this city. Not counting several minor ones that ruined a lot of basement rec rooms back in, oh, 79. That was pretty bad. I think I remember that. Boy, but not 1950. Now, this one just seems as bad as that one, but we didn't have no floodway then. Do you think it will help? Oh, yeah. It's going to save the city. I really just wanted to save my home. It probably will. I hear that's where you met my boy. <laughs> yeah. So what line he use? Excuse me? You know, to ask you out. <laughs> no, I asked him out. You did. Really? Mm-hmm. Whew. Well, I'll be. It's no big deal. What, do you want to change it? Oh, this is fine. What is it, though? Pardon? Well, what is it that we're watching? Oh, I think it's Lassie. It's not my regular. I usually watch well, wrestling or Wheel of Fortune or the flood news. You never know if we need to evacuate.
Mm. Did you know native people never used to live around here? Because it could flood. Now look at us. We don't know any better. You can change it if you want to. No, no, it's all right. Oh, go ahead. No, seriously. Oh, well, all right. Do you have a remote? Just one sec. Chester, Chester, come in here. Chester emerges. He's wearing a hooded sweatshirt and jeans. He emerges from the kitchen. What? Come on, change the TV. Chester changes the channel. The picture becomes snowy. Hey, I fixed the... I know, I know, I know. Chester adjusts the antenna until the image of the littlest hobo becomes clear. You want to watch this? Sure. Yeah, uh, I don't. Hey, change it again, son. Well, to what? I don't know. Oh, find Will Fortune. Chester silently obliges and finds a channel with the Flintstones. Oh, that's good. That's good. Stop. I like the Simpsons. That's not the Simpsons. It's the Flintstones. Dawn readjusts herself and is now sitting somewhat sideways in the big red armchair. Chester clears the picture and sits on the couch facing the TV. This is Denny. Um, actually, uh, Dawn. Oh, sorry. Dawn. Hi. Uh, nice to meet you. Well, finally. She extends her hand. Chester takes it and shakes it lightly. Hey, you're the sandbag lady, eh? And you're the sandbag guy, eh? You're a sandbagger. Yes, well, just my house. We don't want to lose it. Do you know if it's a good paying job? What? Like, how do I get into that in full time? What? Sandbagging. Oh, you just volunteer, show up, just like the other day. It's all volunteer? Oh, Chester. So, so what line did my brother use on you? Excuse me? You know, I'd like to ask you out. Did he ask you if, he ha- if you had any Indian in you? Chester. Uh, sorry, Dad. Hmm. So, can I ask you something? Sure. Well, what are you? What do you mean? Well, you are white, right? Chester? What? I guess so. I'm just asking, because you look part non-white? I, Chester, that is rude. But do you got native in you? Maybe. My family's French, so probably. And that's why you're so pretty. You are French. Chester, don't say that. What? That she's pretty. But she is pretty. Uh, I know, but you are embarrassing her. Oh, that's okay. On TV, Fred comes home and is jumped by Dino. What is Dino, anyhow? He's a dog. Now, that does look, doesn't, doesn't look like a dog at all. Did cavemen have dogs? Well, probably. But I always thought Dino was a dinosaur. Well, that's what he looks like. And he's, ha- and he's got no hair. It's a cartoon. Besides, cavemen don't have cars. Or washing machine elephants. They watch some more. Let's watch that other show. You know, the hobo show? Now that's a dog for sure. Let's just watch this. All these shows have dogs in them. Even the Simpsons. <laughs> Their dog has a funny name. Santa's little helper. Yeah, Santa's little helper. That's the most realistic dog on TV. That's Simpsons dog. 
That dog is so stupid. And he chews on everything and poops on the floor. And that's just like Evan's dog he had when he was small. What was the name of that dog? (laughs) Pee-wee. Pee-wee. We called him Pee-wee because that's all he did. Peed in the corner all the time. These kids could never look after animals. We went away once and we got back. Their pet bird was dead. It wasn't a pet. That was a stupid starling that Evan brought into the house and put in a cage. Why did he do that? He was sick or something. He tried to take care of it. But you can't keep wild animals in cages like that. They die. That's not why the bird died. You kids didn't take care of it. Well, what were we supposed to feed it? We only had old budgie seed. Well, that would have done. It was a starling, not a budgie. Hey, you got any animals there, Denny? I have a dog. He's really my mother's, but he sleeps with me. What kind of dog is he? A chihuahua. Oh, bless you. Saul laughs at his own joke. The front door opens quickly, and Evan enters. He's dressed to go out, but looks somewhat harried.